So I've been thinking about making this video for a while now because I get this question all the time in my stream. Vox, what is an encoder? What one should I use? What's the difference between NVENC and X264? And what bitrate do you suggest? In this video, I'm going to quickly cover all those settings through OBS. The same should apply to anyone using Streamlabs OBS. So stick around and hopefully this video will help you sort your bitrate issues. All right, so first thing we're gonna do in this video here is we're gonna quickly dip into our OBS settings. Now this should be very similar whether you have Streamlabs OBS or no normal OBS. The only real difference is the way you access your settings. But once you get to the settings, it's pretty much identical across the board. The first thing we're gonna have a look here is the output tab. You'll be met with output mode, simple or advanced, depends on whether you've been playing around with this or not. You wanna have this on advanced. And this breaks it up into a streaming, recording, audio, and replay buffer. All right, so we've made our way over to the encoder dropdown, and you're looking at X264, and NVIDIA NVENC New, and NVIDIA NVENC, and you're thinking, what are these, and how do they affect me? Well, the answer is pretty simplified here in this video, but basically, X264 is from your CPU, and the NVENC is from your graphics card. Now, if you're a single PC user, may I suggest that you use NVENC? And the reason is it taxes your computer less, but you sacrifice image quality. Now, here's an example, okay? You're a single PC setup and you've got something like, I don't know, a 1070 graphics card, but you've got a pretty old i5 processor, let's say a 6500. And you're looking at your PC and you're not sure which one's better or stronger and you try to stream off X264 and it taxes your CPU too much and you lose performance. You could do NVENC here. And the only difference between NVIDIA NVENC and NVENC New is the way that it actually uses the dedicated VRAM on your graphics card instead of your dedicated PC RAM. Now, if we're gonna use NVENC New, let's say you're going down the path of saying, I have a stronger graphics card, aka like me, I have a 2080. So I'm going to be doing NVENC new here really quick and you want to go down towards CBR and that's going to stay there. As for your bitrate, we'll cover that soon. And as for quality, I find that with the graphics cards, I find no massive trade-off between quality and max performance. I'm like a bit of a frame whore. So the more performance I can get out of my rig, especially single PC setup guys, I keep this on max performance. Now, look ahead is something that I have always turn off according to the nvidia suggested settings they say turn this off and psycho visual tuning turn this on now as for gpu and max b frames i'm not going to cover that in this video because it's a little bit more in depth than what i want to do and finally we're looking at x264 now x264 is the encoder that uses your cpu now x264 i find has the highest quality out of all of the other encoders at the moment now, I know a lot of people are going to argue with me on this one, but NVENC, although it's great on performance and is the savior among men for single PC setups or around the world, it does not have the same sort of quality as X264. And there's a few reasons for this, which I'll cover soon. Um, X264 uses your CPU. Now, the same applies with X264. Keep it on CBR. As for bitrate, we'll cover that soon, but this is the bitrate that I use, 7,500. Um, and we're going to go down towards presets. Now, presets is where this gets interesting. Now, it's kind of counterintuitive, guys, because the lower your preset on your CPU here, the more it taxes your performance for a better image quality. So I would just go ahead and tell you guys right now, do not use medium unless you have a dedicated stream PC. Do not use slow ever. Slow up, very slow on placebo, all of these will not work on any configuration right now. I mean, you could maybe pump out slow on a third gen thread ripper, maybe, um, but that's not something that I would honestly even recommend, even if you could. Um, so we're gonna look at medium, fast, fast, the very fast, super fast and ultra fast here. Um, I have a 3900X. This is a quite a high end CPU and I can push medium on a single PC setup with this uh, CPU. However, I find that the image quality trade-off versus performance between medium and fast is just not worth it. 
If you have some older process, let's say you have an i5-65 like I said earlier, something like an ultra fast or a super fast, um, and then just slowly work your way up until you find the performance drop is something that you can't handle. Because you guys got to remember that if you have an old CPU, it's got to handle your gameplay. If you're a single PC streamer, it's got to handle your gameplay and your encoding at the same time. And once you start slapping, you know, a 1080p 60 FPS camera on with a very fast moving high action FPS game on top of that, you know, this thing's got a lot of stuff to do and it's got to work hard. So for me personally, even though I have a high end CPU, I would very much recommend very fast for anyone looking at doing this and slowly work your way up towards fast. I find fast is the place to be right now. Um, the image quality trade-off between fast and medium is barely noticeable on platforms like Twitch um, or obviously YouTube, stuff like that. You can maybe push obviously medium because you've got better compression rates um, because it's not live streaming. Um, so now let's have a quick look at what is a bitrate and what one should I use. So now we're going to take a quick look at what is a bitrate and how much should I use. Let's use an analogy here that a lot of you would understand. Imagine what we're looking at here in my scene is a canvas. And everything across it being processed to my Twitch from here to here all the way across. This is the canvas and everything on it needs a bitrate which is like the paint. Okay. Now, bitrate is pretty easy to understand, guys. So, so I want you to do something really quick for me and very, very simple. I want you to open up a speed test. Now, we're going to quickly have a look at a speed test here. I've got a lot of stuff running in the background, including a download for the new COD. So mine might actually be pretty bad, but we're going to quickly pump this in and I'm going to show you guys if I could type right, that is. Um, we're going to do a quick speed test. And I want you guys to do the exact same thing with me here. So while you're doing the speed test, you just wait for the download is pretty much irrelevant. And we're going to head over to the upload and that's where things get interesting. Now, upload and bitrate are hand in hand. They go hand in hand when it comes to streaming. As you can see, right now we're downloading COD, watching a lot of streams in the background. I've got 18 megabytes per second upload speed. Now that is not great, okay? That is not top of the line and that is not a flex. This internet is pretty shockingly bad at the moment. But the truth is, I can still stream in a really, really high quality stream. Why? Because I've still got a minimum 18 megabytes upload speed to work with. Now let me show you what that means. I stream in 7,500 kilobytes per second on an X264. Why do I do this? Well. The Twitch limit rate at the moment is 8,000 bits. Now, I would not even remotely push 8,000. In fact, I would not recommend going over 7,500 because once you start going higher than that, I'm not sure where the limit is, but once you go past 7,500, Twitch starts bringing in the law um, and they start basically downscaling your stream. So my max quality is 1704 by 960, but if I push this, much higher let's say I go 8000 it'll definitely push me down to 720p the reason for this is twitch doesn't want to give everyone 8000 bitrate because their servers can't handle it and their servers don't want to handle it um i know not absolutely everyone should do this but i would recommend guys if your upload speed is over 12 so basically my rule of thumb is half your upload speed should be your minimum bit rate that you can get away with. So let's say you've got, you know, an eight to 10 megabyte per second upload speed. What should I stream in? I would recommend 4,000. Always go for half because it is safe because you've got fluctuations there and you do not want to be dropping, you don't want to be dropping frames. Okay, so what happens is guys, is when you're live streaming, you've got a little frame counter down the bottom that tells you percentage of drop frames. So if you're not hitting this target bitrate, you will drop frames and the person at home will start buffering. So we just quick did a little quick overview of what a bitrate is, but what resolution should I use? What size should the canvas be for the amount of paint that you're going to put across it, the bitrate? So we're going to quickly look at the next tab here and you're still in your settings, I hope, and we're going to drop down to video. Now, 
this might change depending on what your canvas resolution is but like i said remember the canvas analogy here um is your native resolution so my monitor is uh, capable of 2k resolution um 1440p but i keep mine in 1920 1080p because i find that i get better fps that way in the game that i play all right so we're going to keep it on what your native resolution is so obviously that you've got this set up now we're going to have a quick look at a rescale uh, resolution and what are they and what one should I use. Now the truth is guys, true 1080p on Twitch is not really a thing right now. Um, the, to get a minimum good looking image on 1080p live streaming, you would need over 10,000 bitrate available um, to even make the image something that you would want it to. And the truth is, guys, you've also got to understand that not everyone is watching you in a 1080p monitor. Not a lot of people actually bring up your stream and they put it in full screen on a 1080p monitor and they're looking at it like that. You've got to understand that, guys. A lot of people just watching you in a little small little window, a small canvas, as you will, um, because they're at work or they're just watching you on their secondary monitor while they play in the background. You gotta understand that guys. But the thing that I want you guys to also understand is that when it comes to rescaling your output, if you're using 1920, 1080, and then you're rescaling to 1920, 1080, so basically no rescaling, so you're not downscaling, as we call it, um, you're actually gonna use less resources. So if you're having a hard time streaming on any sort of preset in a really bad system, um, but you've got good internet, the chances are that you will pull a less um, performance away from your rig if you use 1920 1080 but you sacrifice quality you've got to understand that because not a lot of people have enough paint like i said the bit rate is just not high enough to get a clean image so what resolution should i use and why should i use it guys i would definitely recommend for anyone starting out to please um, start off on at least like if you can pull a fourth a uh, 4000 bit rate please for the love of god start off in 720p i find that 720p 60 fps is probably the best starting config okay 720p 60 fps and the reason this is the sweet spot is because with 720p if you push a 3000 to 4000 bit rate you can actually get a pretty clean image okay I find that if you smack this down to Lanskos 36 samples here, you can actually push a pretty clean image with a decent internet. But if you want to push it and you want to continue to go up, I would consider, like a lot of people here around in the Twitch industry, like this resolution called 1600 by 900. Um, this is a great resolution because it's not true 1080. Um, but it gets close, especially because this is a pretty common, um, this is not actually a real resolution. I mean, you can actually use the one that they provide here, which is 1536 by 864, but it doesn't look as clean. So some people just type it in manually. Now, the reason that this resolution is nice is because that's generally the size of the player that people are watching you in. Um, and it's a little known fact, but like I said earlier, not a lot of people watch you in full screen uh, on a 1080p monitor. So this is what I suggest for anyone that can push a 6,000 bit rate or more. So some general takeaways from this video, guys. X264 versus NVENC, which one should I use? The answer simply is you use the one that is stronger in your system, especially if you're a single PC streamer. It's most likely your graphics card. Let's say you have a pretty old 6th gen i5-65, but you have a 1080 Ti. It is always going to be NVENC if you want to push frames. If you want to push quality, it's probably a, a preset on your X264. What bitrate should I use? You got to remember that my general rule of thumb is use half of your upload speed as your minimum bitrate, okay? So if you have an 8000, 500 or eight, no, 9,000 bitrate, use 4,000 or 3,500 in your setting. 
And if you start going into the lower bit rates, look at lower resolutions because you've got to understand, like I said in the video, the paint and the canvas analogy. You have to have enough paint for the canvas. So if you're running out of paint, so AKA bit rate, have a smaller canvas, have a 720p, um, 60 FPS image, but try and push a 3000 bit rate. And if that doesn't work, go to a lower resolution. If you have more paint and you can push a 7,500 bit rate like me, try 1600, 900, a bigger canvas. And if you're running out of performance, try 1080p. It doesn't look as good, but it uses less performance. Hey guys, so that concludes my video on what a bit rate is and what encoder you should use. And more importantly, what resolution as well. If this video helped you in any sort of way, make sure you smash that like and subscribe. I also stream six days a week on Twitch. If you have any more questions, you can always come and ask me in my channel or in the comments down below and I'll answer as fast as I can. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one.